So yeah. why don't we hop into it so people can hear about um, this film and our thoughts. And as always, we'd love to hear yours. Please leave us some comments, especially on YouTube. It's helpful um, on what you thought of I Saw the TV Glow. So uh, let me tell you about I Saw the TV Glow, which is from 2024, which is why it was smacked on at the end of our series here. And it's about two teenagers bond over their love of a supernatural TV show, but it is mysteriously canceled. Um, and it is directed by Shane Schoenbrunn. Uh, that is which such, is such a vague a... description. Of <laughs> what is what? I think that's what you're about to say. But like, yeah, it really is. Funny. It really is. It's like, okay, sucks. That Because that's all I knew. When I went in to the film, all I knew was that there's like a TV show that they're obsessed with and they're going to bond over it and that it's it's giving like... Like, I'll say it too. It's like, are you afraid of the dark? Kind of. Yeah. Like, um, Monster of the Week, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, like, I even... Uh, yeah, that is, are, are you afraid of the dark? Because what, what are they called? The Midnight Society. Mm-hmm. You know? So, like... Yeah. <laughs> and it's the Midnight Realm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That's what I went in. And then the movie happened. And I was like, well, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So here's a longer bit about what happens in this film. Um, we will be covering like the big twist that does occur in the film. So yeah. um, if that is that like if twists and like, you know, reveals or something that you've you really, really cherish and want to experience organically, then watch the film and then come back and listen to us. Um, otherwise, you may find that like knowing that will help inform and make you a better, more intentional viewer. Yeah. Uh, because you're like, oh, I'm looking for these things. I'm anticipating that. And then you're not blown away in the middle and you're like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> um, and like yeah. you went in blind and then I went in knowing everything. And I like totally had like, <laughs> I was like media analysis classes the entire time. Cause I was like, oh, I know this is going to be tragic and what the ending is and I that really influenced how I viewed it versus I guess like you know you have to watch it twice which is also good yeah yeah and the second time I think was a lot better for me to be quite honest so um our personal opinion might be to uh be it's okay because uh I think it helps you kind of see where it, like in in experience the film um, more intentionally, like I said. Uh, but again, if that is something that you really care about, here's a spoiler warning as it's happening, because um, we're just going to get into it, which means uh, we will be talking about like some of those bigger things. So um, Owen, who is a young middle school boy, meets the moody, mysterious Maddie during election night in 1996. 1996 and he quickly bonds with this girl over a monster of the week sci-fi horror series called the pink opaque about two girls who battle against monsters sent by the villainous mr melancholy and uh his um associates uh mm -hmm. marco and polo and uh it is very reminiscent of like i said are you afraid of the dark <laughs> like honestly the intro video like mm -hmm. i always think of like this swing like right in the yeah. beginning of Are You Afraid of the Dark? It looked kind of like that when I was watching. Uh, yeah. And Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which is a notoriously Monster of the Week series. Um, yeah, and it felt very, <laughs> yes. And it felt very nostalgic and haunting, especially for Buffy that had like a lot of like, for like queer femmes, like mm -hmm. lesbian awakenings, um, but also like a representation of a lesbian witch. Um, mm -hmm. And this unfortunately does have like a literal barrier gaze trope. <laughs> But kind of yeah. a good thing. I might have time to say that. I did mean to mention that at some point. Yeah. But, uh, there's so much to say. I didn't even get into it. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that happens in Buffy. Uh, mm -hmm. Bury the gays um, happens there. But so while not exactly friends, the two hold the show in such reverence, clutching it as a life raft in the sea of uncertainty and repression of their small suburban town um, that they do become kind of close over that, right? Um, a few years of sparse secret meetings to watch or discuss the show, Maddie uh, asks Owen to run away with her. Um, hold on, this would be after a few. Oop, I'm going to reset that. After a few years of sparse secret meetings to watch or discuss the show, Maddie asks Owen to run away with her um, because she feels very strongly that this town will kill her if she stays. She... Yeah does not know 
how or why. She just knows that if she stays here, she will die, um, which is yeah. a sentiment I feel like a lot of us have had. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I left. <laughs> so yeah, I've went very far away and have I not been back far, since. But similar vibe. <laughs> exactly. I was like, no, I'm out of here. Yeah. Um, but frightened, Owen runs back home and later finds that Maddie had disappeared without a trace and their sanctuary show, um, the Pinko Pink, is uh, coincidentally also canceled at the same time. So after a handful of years with Owen growing and molding himself into the performative adult he is asked to become, he encounters Maddie once again. She's older now, has a new name, and has very clearly changed. Um, Way more... I don't want to say confident, but she definitely feels like herself. Mm -hmm. Um, And also a little bit like Tara. She's wearing Tara clothes, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is one of the characters from that TV show. Um, She drops some really intense news on Owen after asking him what he remembers of their favorite show. And more importantly, the events surrounding their watching. She says something like, don't you ever feel like, like it doesn't match, like match up. Like, yeah. it, it, like, it doesn't make sense what you're remembering. Like, that doesn't feel real. Like, yeah. and, and not having real memories is so scary. Um, and so then Owen thinks back on his history and his moments of happiness with Maddie. Only now, we don't just see these moments of him watching the show with her. We also see these clips of him in a dress. Um, and he is happy in this opportunity to be himself. And there's, like, this really soft, like, caring look of affection that like Maddie has towards him mm-hmm. when he's in that dress um, where it's like, you know, like, oh, like, look at you, like, yeah. look at you, you, you know, yeah. witnessing um, happiness and like true authentic self is beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so like he had forgotten that he even had that. Mm-hmm. And this whole time he had just thought they were watching TV together. And so then on top of that, <laughs> Maddie tells Owen that the Pink Opaque isn't a show at all, but the truth, like reality, that the heroines he watched battle absurd villains like the ice cream man uh, were actually he and Maddie, that Owen is Isabel and Maddie is Tara, right? Mm-hmm. And that they've been tricked by Mr. Melancholy and buried deep underground away from each other. And the only way to return to their former lives is to bury themselves, to kill these midnight realm versions of themselves before they die in their real world because they are actively suffocating, right? So she, he says, mm-hmm. uh, having you notice that you, you're failing health, right? Your inability yeah. to breathe. And it's something that you're watching on screen. Like you see him start to like, wheeze and his like asthma and health issues get worse as time goes on um and essentially you know we're told that maddie was right that this town was going to kill them (laughs) because it was doing that right and so when maddie offers him one more chance to escape to join her on the other side of his true self as isabel Owen is once again frightened and he runs away from that opportunity and straight into the performative life that's been killing him slowly. Um, Mm -hmm. He says in the show, it was time for me to become a man, a real adult, a productive member of society. Um, And then we see him do that. He's like, I even have kids of my own and we don't see them. (laughs) We don't see that family. Uh, We don't see what he like. We do not see that. We just see him tell us that and he gets a bigger TV, right? He's getting with the times, right? Yeah. Um, time moves forward again and we see Owen now a middle-aged adult, uh, although uh, significantly worse for wear. Like he is not that yeah. much older, but he he's fallen apart. Yep. Um, now he works at an arcade, this fun zone, um, and he moves through the space withered and wheezing, um, that mm-hmm. breathing significantly worse. Um, and he has this like truly heartbreaking breakdown moment during a child's birthday party where he lets out an existential heart-wrenching cry um and please he 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 says he is dying he calls for his mom like it's it's really just like you could get so caught up in just how distraught that is and how heartbreaking it is and then on top of that everyone stops moving yeah they They just like totally ignore yeah not even just ignore they freeze yeah they stop like, moving reality <laughs> and stops yeah yeah and, and <laughs> he's just having this breakdown and losing it you know and it's like it's the second time we've seen him lose it to this degree one time when he 
came to the conclusion, like when he watched the finale and it was clear that he was Isabel um, and his dad is like trying to brainwash him again, that he cries and he says, like, you're not my father. Like, I don't belong here. Um, And that same heartbreak is here again. And Mm -hmm. it really it's just like. He he does an amazing um, uh, justice is is just phenomenal. Um, And then uh, he like I said, the people pause. They're just unfeeling, unattentive. They do not care about Owen. They're just they're not real. Um, And he stumbles to the bathroom where standing before a mirror carves into his own chest, opening it to reveal the glowing static of a TV screen. Uh, confirming his otherness and the truth that he's in the midnight realm in an upsetting and equally heartbreaking ending owen seals himself back up and then staggers back out onto the arcade floor and he just mutters apologies to those around him none of which acknowledge his presence so he's just sorry about earlier sorry sorry and it's very like it's kind it's of getting Morty, yeah. <laughs> Rick and Morty, like the way he says it, but it really, it, it is devastating because he's just like yeah. shuffling about and you're like, oh, Aaron, this was your chance. And I, yeah. And, yeah. So let's talk about A Tale of Transition um, and this idea that sometimes the pink opaque feels more real than real life, which is what Maddie, you know, discloses to Owen in yeah. one of their sleepovers, um, you know, letting him know that she doesn't feel home here. Yeah. Um, which like in like the fact that it was true, <laughs> that yeah. she really was from this other world uh, is one thing, but like for a lot of people who were not yeah. from another world, that still felt real. Yeah. The idea that so, like a TV show, the, this escape, this fictional world felt more real than what you were really experiencing is a trauma response. Association. <laughs> So um, my first time watching I Saw the TV Glow, I was absolutely speechless and numb after the ending. Like, I literally yeah. sat there and I, like, didn't do or say anything. And, like, my husband came in and was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah. And then they were like, do you like, did you like the film? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so I really was just like, I... I, I have to unpack this. Like, I yeah. really was like, I don't know what to do with what I've become. Um, and <laughs> honestly, my heart just really went out to poor o- Owen. And yeah. I was also like, like, I was really sad for him, but I was also really mad, like, yeah. for a good amount of it. Like, the second time watching it, I felt a little more bad for him. But the first time I was mad, <laughs> right? Because yeah. I questioned why he'd choose to ignore the call to adventure that so many of us wish would find us, right? To be told yeah. that the feeling of otherness that you, you've experienced all of your life was valid and that you really did belong somewhere else. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I couldn't tell you how many times I wish somebody like knocked on my door and was like, you're a wizard, you know, like, yeah, or like, you're <laughs> an alien, like, let's go home to your real planet. Like, yeah, like, oh, <laughs> anyone, like, you're a fairy and you got swapped at birth, and now I yeah. can steal you. The back reason to you the feel this forest. way is real, and uh, you were right the whole time. Yeah, uh, actually, out. let me save you. You uh, are actually a people, and it's okay. Yeah, um, it's and like the honestly, society that we live in does that on purpose. So yes. <laughs> Um, and honestly, I was just feeling like as horrifying as the reality was, like the truth of what Isabel and Tara endured in the real world, like in the pink opaque, as scary as that is of them fighting Mr. Melancholy and all in the milk and the, all the Luna juice, <laughs> all that yeah, stuff. That so wild, scary, yeah. right? Yeah. Still, I just felt like that chance at being your true magical self felt like an obvious answer. Right. And yeah. every time Owen ran away from Maddie slash Tara's attempts to free him in each stage of his life, I was disappointed to find him wrapping himself in the comfort and normalcy and status quo. Like yeah, to just go, oh, I got to be. Yes, exactly. I got to be the okay. man that the yeah. world told me I got to be. It's like, got to eat the imaginary you- steak and then murder all these people. You know, it's, yes. <laughs> it's similar. Yes, you got to eat the steak. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, do, I do stand by I think I would stay in the matrix but it's yeah. okay. yeah. <laughs> but for all the disappointment I did really understand why he did it too right yeah and I did just really like surface level for like what's happening in the film like that's just a scared little boy and like when yeah. he goes in and cries that first time and is like you have to tell my dad and like save me 
from this crazy thing that's happening, it really isn't like the literal like save me from the fact that this girl's trying to run away. It saved me from what I'm tempted to do. Yeah. Right. It saved me from what I, yeah. Save me because I've seen that I'm different. Right. And so I just really resonated with that primal fear of being an other and that simply acknowledging that you are different opened a door to an unknown world that could hold even more horrors and discomfort. Right. It's really about choosing the devil that, you know, (laughs) so every time he was like nope nope okay like this is scary i don't want to do that that sounds really because what if you're wrong also but like besides that it really is like you're asking me to do a big thing here yeah Um, and and like even though his attack yeah and even though his like attachments were not great like his dad sucked he did love Mm -hmm. his mom and like Mm -hmm. he was staying for that Mm -hmm. more than anything else and it was just like really sad yeah and at some point it just becomes too it becomes really hard when you've played pretend for as long as you have um Mm -hmm. to kind of accept that call right um and for director shane schoenbrunn the film is a metaphor for gender dysphoria right it's an homage to the experience of living one life while knowing deep down you belong in another um and their depressing ending was intentional and honest like we found in the end of it follows the lack of concrete answers or triumph feels far more realistic and inspiring I think <laughs> personally um, for so many of us, there is no final act or moment when the monsters we battle are defeated and we return, return to normalcy. Yeah. There's not like, there's no big bad, right? Like if I could be like, I, I defeated the American government and capitalism and now we could <laughs> all be free. That's never going to happen. Right? Like <laughs> society's influence on us never is always going to yeah. be that. <laughs> like, but those things yeah. where it's like, these big monsters right there's really no time where like okay i fought (laughs) the gender binary and now i could be who i am and everyone's cool about it like that's just not gonna happen there's always someone that's not cool about it yeah it's it's a constant journey right transitions and decisions that take us closer to being who we are and more importantly comfortable with who we are um so it is a constant battle it just like It's not that there's no resolution in the end. It's just that the wins are little like stops along the journey where you're like, oh, I feel a little more comfortable in my skin versus I am completely who I was always supposed to be. Yeah. (laughs) Because I I don't think anyone feels that. Yeah. And I also like, I guess like Owen still being alive at the end always Mm -hmm. does give like, they could always make the choice tomorrow to finally leave the midnight realm. Like exactly. just continuing to be alive. You're like, oh, there's still hope, even though many would say it's too late. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it's not. They're still alive. There's always a tomorrow that they could make that choice. So Yeah, maybe it's maybe he's finally tired enough. Yeah. Um uh this idea that transition leaves you traumatized for the rest of your life um, is something that director Jane Schoenbrunn uh, shared in an article on Vanity Fair titled The Complex Ending of I Saw the TV Glow Explained. Um, They go on to say trans people will be unpacking pre-transition for as long as they live, as well as many other things out of their control, right? It's, they will always have to reckon with these two or three, four infinite versions of ourselves that as we're trying to figure out what that final version or the one that we feel at least most comfortable with is right and so for me when owen opens himself up revealing the truth that he's been running from his entire life right of the simulation in the midnight realm that that is true he is forced to confront that truth and that he is in fact different and that the act of forcing him to conform is actively killing him Right. Like all those things that were just a whisper in the wind, caution, like possibly dismissed because a crazy person was telling you, you know, like he could have done that. Finally, it's like you can't fight this. This is real, real. Um, And Joan Brown explains in that interview that Owen has seen something he can't unsee. And they say, what's he going to do with that? For me, you imagine people who are maybe figuring out that they're trans watching this movie. And it's literally true that if you're seeing this message, there is still time. Then yeah. there is still time and you haven't suffocated to death, right? Like Kat yeah. was just saying, it's not the end yeah. for him at all. It's it's just another part of that story. And that 
that there is still time is like written in chalk. It's the message that Tara mm-hmm. leaves them like to just say like, it's never too late. Right. Yeah. As long as you're here. So just as Jay and Paul in It Follows are walking away, holding hands at the end, that isn't the end of the story, right? Only the end of the film. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We are left knowing that something more is going to be happening once we stop watching, right? Like that was not a a bow. It's like, oh, they just keep living with the knowledge um, Mm -hmm. that they're not completely safe and that something is always falling behind them. Right. Like they will always have that. And that's how they move forward in their life. Mm -hmm. Oh, and closing himself back up and apologizing to the patrons is not the end of the story either. Um, the director said the ending says something about the mentality where we as queer people, and especially as trans people were taught from the youngest age to think of our true selves as inconveniences to everyone around us, or as something to protect the world from. I think it's a very understandable reaction to close yourself back up and apologize for existing. Right. That's it. Yeah. Like Owen has very much been like the first thought <laughs> kind of thing. Like your first reaction, he does not want to step on toes. He doesn't want to make people mad. Um, I think even his counterpart, Isabel, feels very much like that, too. Um, Mm -hmm. Very, like, just soft and sweet. And so um, zipping it up (laughs) uh, is a a reasonable response. It's also really just, like, so distressing (laughs) when it's happening because you're like, oh. So I often appreciate bleak endings when they serve a genuine purpose and i felt that this was very validating and though it weighed on me heavily i did understand why right i do Mm -hmm. um ultimately feel a little bit concerned about the interpretation of the film as a whole right like how easy it could be misinterpreted that the only way out of the midnight realm is to kill yourself um And, like, there is some truth to that in the film where Owen needed to not kill himself, but that version of himself that the world told him to mold into, right? Mm-hmm. And that's, like, the metaphorical part of it, yeah. right? Like, you're bury- you're not literally burying your gaze because they're being reborn. <laughs> you're yeah, burying your straights. Yeah. <laughs> you're burying yeah. your gender conformity. Um, yeah. You're, bender- <laughs> you're ben- like, burying, like, society's expectations and requirements of you, and then you're you know, like a, reborn. a phoenix, yeah. you know, from the yeah. ashes. But I do like it. It distressed me a little bit that if some yeah. like a young person who's impressionable might watch that and think like, like again, because I was thinking of Undone, right? Yeah. And I was thinking if you're struggling with fighting to be here, mm-hmm. literally, and then you watch this, and the answer was die, um, because there's a better on the other side. Like I, like it could very easily just be misinterpreted that the other side is literally an afterlife versus the other side is you coming out as yourself. Right. And I think that's what stressed me out again. Cause I I was really connected to like this idea of the the show undone. Um, but like if, like if you take it as like what it's intended to be, which is like bury the self that isn't true, you can Mm -hmm. then, become the person you are um, because then he could be free in the pink opaque, right? Not free yeah. from horror and trouble. Cause like we said, it's not a perfect yeah, world. It is Melancholy very scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's still the scary ice cream man. There's still Mr. Melancholy yeah. and Marco and Polo. They are real. Right. Yeah. But he would be free to be themselves while in that world and while fighting those horrors. Right. Yeah. Um, which is, significantly better and would not be wheezing and dying and would not be full of people telling them that they're not real. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So it's not a perfect ending because it's not an ending at all. <laughs> in my yeah. opinion, right? Because Owen isn't dead and his last moments of apologies clearly in shock may be the wake up call that he finally needed to push his way underground and to yeah. ultimately dig up who they were meant to be, which was Isabel. Mm. This film hurt. It was really good, though, in a lot of yeah. ways. And it was lots of pieces of where I was like, oh, I wish it didn't happen like that. Um, yeah. It was, com- it was complicated. It was complicated. But... Which is a good film, honestly. Yeah. No, <laughs> honestly, yeah. Like, when it makes you think a lot of things, it's... Yeah, the main thing that was, like, a struggle for me was what you said, where it was, like, at the end, it was, like, if you don't... If you go into this in the wrong headspace, you could come out of it feeling really hopeless and sad uh, yeah. and not in a place that is like transformative or growth oriented. And that's like the danger of it. But hopefully 
you've listened to this episode and you're like, actually, I get it. Like we need yeah. to oh, wait. be ourselves. That's the message <laughs> yeah. is be yourself and don't suffocate in a place that stifles who you are mm-hmm. within like your ability to do so. Be um, yourself. Be yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That. 